Hey, this is Andrew Brown from Exam Pro, and we are taking a quick look at all the core data related Azure services that we are likely to encounter through this course. So let's get to it. The first starting with Azure Storage Accounts, and this is an umbrella service for various storage types such as tables, files, and blobs. We have Azure Blob Storage, and this is a uh, data store that stores things as objects instead of files. And the advantage here is that you get distributed storage. These objects can span multiple machines for unstructured data. You have Azure Tables, which is a key value NoSQL data store, more like like a database, but it's under Azure Storage Accounts, and it's intended for simpler projects. You have Azure Files, and this is a managed file share for NFS or SMB. So if you need a file share or a file system that you need to mount to multiple virtual machines or workstation, uh, this is what you would use. You have Azure Storage uh, Explorer. This is a standalone application you download to your Windows, Linux, or Mac machine that easily allows you to explore uh, the various services above. Then you have Azure Synapse uh, Analytics. This is a data warehouse and unified analytics platform. The service used to be called something like Azure uh, Warehouse, but they added analytics on top of it, kind of making it into a lake house sort service. And so that's what it is now. We have Cosmo DB. This is a fully managed NoSQL database service that can host various NoSQL engines, such as Azure Tables, Documents, Key Value, and Graph. When you use Cosmo DB, it's going to have a core mode, and that pretty much is its documents engine. So a lot of times when we talk about Cosmo DB, we just think of it as a documents documents database, but it can actually have a variety uh, underneath. You have Azure Data Lake Store Generation 2. We won't talk about Gen 1 because it's just not really in use anymore, but this is a centralized data repository for big data blob storage designed for vast amounts of data. It actually is just Azure Blob Storage with an additional layer of management. You have Azure Data Analytics. This is a big data as a service. You can write USQL to return data from your Azure Data Lake. Then you have Azure Data Box, which isn't really covered in the exam, but I'm including here because I think it's a great addition. So you can import and export terabytes of data via hard drive you mail into the Azure Data Center. Onto our next page here, we have SQL Server for Azure Virtual Machines. This is when you need an SQL Server where you're migrating an existing SQL from your on-premise data center onto Azure, but you uh, can't afford to make any changes. So you're literally taking the VM and lifting and then shifting it onto Azure but you get to uh, have access to the virtual machine underneath, so you can control the OS access uh, layer. And also, if you already have an existing license, it's a great solution for that as well. If you are doing a lift and shift, but you don't need to manage the virtual machine and you want Azure to uh, do all the work for you, you have SQL managed instances. Then you have Azure SQL, which is the fully managed MS SQL uh, database. Then you have Azure databases for MariaDB, Postgres, and MySQL. You have Azure Cache for Redis. Now, this is an in-memory data store for returning data extremely fast, but is also extremely volatile. And this isn't covered on the exam, but I like to include it because I think it's just one of the data services that's important. You have Microsoft Office 365 SharePoint, not really covered on the exam, but you will hear it mentioned uh, throughout uh, the course content. And, you know, I think that if you haven't had exposure to it, you should know what it is. It is a shared file system for organizations. The company owns all the files and applies fine-grained rule-based access controls. You have Azure Databricks. This is a third-party provider partnered with Azure, specializing in at Apache Spark to provide very fast ETL jobs as well as ML and streaming. You have Microsoft Power BI. This is a business intelligence tool used to create dashboards and interactive reports to empower business decisions. We have HD Insights. This is a fully managed Hadoop system that can run many open source big data engines for doing data transformations for streaming, ETL, ELT. Uh, we have uh, Azure Data Studio. This is an IDE that looks very much like Visual Studio Code, but designed around data-related tasks, cross-platforms, similar to SSS, SSIS, but broader data workloads. You have Azure Data Factory, a managed ETL, ELT pipeline builder, easily build transformation pipelines via a web interface within Azure. And then you have SQL Server Integration Services, SSIS. It's a standalone Windows app to prepare data for SQL workloads via transformation pipelines. There's probably a bunch of other little services or tools that we don't have in this list, but don't worry, we'll cover them throughout the course. Just remember these ones that we went over here today.